Let's document! Join me as we cover breast ultrasound protocols. On today's edition, documenting the abnormal axilla. When you visualize an abnormal mass in the breast, the next thing that you're gonna look at is the axillary lymph nodes. When cancerous cells travel to a lymph node, the cells begin invading the lymph node, replacing the normal lymph node tissue with cancer. And this is why you'll hear radiologists describe it as a replaced lymph node. Ultrasound features of an abnormal lymph node include a rounded shape, thickening of the outer hypoechoic cortex, greater than three to four millimeters in the AP, which is the height dimension, which is a vertical measurement, a focal cortical bulge, which is a lobulation of the cortex, a complete loss of the central fatty hilum. You may see indentations of the fatty hilum, and this is a sign of the loss of the fatty hilum in those areas that have been replaced by cancerous cells. You may see hypoechoic areas within the fatty hilum. This also signals replacement of the fatty hilum with the cancerous cells. And you may see irregular margins of the lymph node, angular spiculated margins. And rather than a hilar blood flow pattern, you may see more of a peripheral blood flow pattern. To document abnormal nodes, you want to document the three most abnormal nodes. Don't document all of them. And the most abnormal features would be complete loss of the hilum or the ones with the thickest cortex. And you want to document them in both sagittal and transverse planes. You want to measure the cortical thickness of abnormal nodes unless the hilum is completely replaced and you can no longer visualize the hilum. And to measure the cortical thickness, this is going to be a vertical measurement, an AP dimension and you want to document this axillary node just like you would document any lymph node. You want to do it in two planes, in sagittal and transverse, and you want to do a with and without measurements, and then also a color Doppler image in each plane. And you want to ensure that you have three measurements, a length, a width, and a height, which is two horizontal measurements and one vertical measurement. Now, as you're scanning, if you come across an abnormal intramammary node, the only difference in documentation is if you're in the breast, you wanna use radial and anti-radial planes to document it rather than sagittal and transverse planes like you would use in the axilla. Let's summarize. Here's the steps for documenting abnormal lymph nodes. If any abnormal nodes are visualized in the axilla, you wanna document the three most abnormal nodes. So you're looking for the ones that either have a complete loss of the fatty hilum or have the thickest cortex. And you wanna do this in sagittal and transverse planes. You wanna measure the cortical thickness of the abnormal nodes unless the hilum is completely replaced and you can't see it at all. If you're documenting abnormal intramammary nodes, these are nodes within the breast, you wanna annotate with which breast, either right or left, the clock location, the distance from the nipple, and the transducer orientation. And you want to use radial and anti-radial planes in the breast. Otherwise, the rest of your images should follow the same protocol as axillary lymph nodes. For axillary lymph nodes, you want to document the lymph nodes in two planes with and without measurements. In both sagittal and transverse planes, you want to take color Doppler images also in both planes. I would do a sagittal image with and without measurements, a sagittal image with color Doppler, and then move to a transverse image with and without measurements, a transverse image with color Doppler, and then I would do a cortical thickness measurement. This is your AP, anterior, posterior, or height measurement in either a sagittal or transverse plane. It's not important what plane you take your measurements from. What's most important is that you are taking a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. Next, we're gonna talk about how to document pathology that's in the axilla that's not a lymph node. But first, a little anatomy review. The axillary tail is the normal extension of glandular tissue into the lower axilla. The axillary tail tissue is glandular tissue that's contiguous, connected to the upper outer quadrant breast tissue. The axillary tail tissue is located deeper on the ultrasound image than accessory breast tissue. 
and it's located posterior to the subcutaneous fat layer. When you're looking at an ultrasound image, you'll see the skin line, you'll see fat, and then you'll see the glandular tissue that's in the axillary tail, and it will be connected to the upper outer quadrant of the breast tissue. Now let's talk about accessory breast tissue. Accessory breast tissue is a developmental anomaly in which one or more areas along the milk lines fails to atrophy in the embryo. Accessory breast tissue can occur in males and females. When the embryo is developing during weeks five to six, streaks develop from the axilla to the groin and evolve into mammary ridges known as the milk lines. During weeks six to eight of development, most of the bilateral mammary ridges atrophy except in the pectoral region of the chest. And this is the future site of the breast buds. Think of the mammary lines as two imaginary lines extending from the axilla to the groin in both males and females. Extra areas of glandular breast tissue, known as accessory breast tissue, can occur anywhere along the milk lines where the tissue fails to atrophy during embryological development. Supernumerary, which are extra nipples, can also occur anywhere along the milk lines. A common site for accessory breast tissue is in the axilla, and sometimes this will even have a nipple associated with it. Accessory breast tissue on the ultrasound is located superficially. It's anterior to the subcutaneous fat layer and just below the skin line. If you're looking at the ultrasound image, you'll see the skin line, you'll see a patch of glandular tissue, and then you'll see fat located posterior to the accessory breast tissue. So what pathology can occur in the axilla that's not an abnormal lymph node? You can have a mass in the axillary tail tissue, you can have a mass in the accessory tissue, or you can also find skin lesions, such as a sebaceous cyst up in the axilla. It's important to note that the axillary tail and the accessory breast tissue are composed of glandular tissue, the same type of tissue that's found within the breast. Any pathology that can occur in the breast glandular tissue can occur in the accessory breast tissue and the axillary tail tissue. You can have cysts, you can have benign solid masses such as a fibroadenoma, and you can also find a cancer. In the images to the right, the top image is a solid mass within accessory breast tissue. You'll note that the glandular tissue in this image is white on this image and it's located right underneath the skin line. That's how we know it's accessory tissue and that accessory tissue surrounds that mass. In the middle image, this is a cyst within accessory breast tissue. Because the cyst is so large, it's hard to appreciate the accessory tissue in this image, but the white glandular accessory tissue is superficial on the image, right underneath the skin line, and contains a thin rim of that tissue around that cyst. The bottom image is a sebaceous cyst, which is a skin lesion, with its hallmark feature, a track to the skin. A sebaceous cyst is a skin lesion, and it's a cyst that forms when oils collect around a hair follicle. It appears on the ultrasound as a cyst, a fluid collection, and commonly will have internal echoes inside. It will be located either just below the skin layer, or partially in the skin layer, or completely in the skin layer. And the hallmark feature that we're looking for on the ultrasound is a track to the skin, which in this bottom image is the thin black line that's located anterior to the cyst. This is actually the track of the hair follicle. Visualizing this track to the skin confirms that it's a sebaceous cyst. Sebaceous cysts should be avascular, meaning no internal vascularity. If you do see vascularity, this can indicate that the sebaceous cyst is inflamed. They can often get inflammation, infection, or it's a solid mass that's masquerading as a sebaceous cyst. Sebaceous cysts often have posterior enhancement, and it's really helpful to use either a standoff pad or a glob of ultrasound gel to help with visualization of the skin layer. Since it's a skin lesion, it will be located very superficially on the ultrasound image. To document images of a mass within the axillary tail tissue, you want 
want to take a sagittal image with and without measurements, a sagittal image with color Doppler, a transverse image with and without measurements, and a transverse image with color Doppler. Since this tissue will be located deeper on the ultrasound image below the fat layer, you want to increase your depth and lower your focal zone. You want to look for glandular tissue around the mass. This will help you determine if it's within accessory breast tissue or if it's within the axillary tail tissue. If you locate glandular tissue, look to see if the glandular tissue is connected to the skin line. This would be accessory breast tissue or if that glandular tissue is connected to the upper outer quadrant glandular tissue. That would make it axillary tail tissue. It's not important which plane you take your measurements in as long as you have a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. To document an accessory tissue mass, you want to take a sagittal image with and without measurements, a sagittal image with color Doppler, a transverse image with and without measurements, a transverse image with color Doppler. You want to look for glandular tissue around the mass. If the glandular tissue is located just below the skin line, then it's accessory breast tissue. If the glandular tissue is located deeper on the image and is connected to the tissue of the upper outer quadrant of the breast, then it's axillary tail tissue. It's not important which transducer planes you take your measurements from. You just need to make sure that you have a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. For a mass in the accessory breast tissue, you want to decrease your depth since that tissue will be be located just under the skin line very superficially on the image. You can also zoom the image and it's very helpful to use a standoff pad or a glob of ultrasound gel in order to see the superficial mass more clearly. To document a skin lesion such as a sebaceous cyst on an ultrasound, you want to take a sagittal image with and without measurements, a sagittal image with color Doppler, a transverse image with and without measurements, a transverse image with color Doppler, Doppler. The most important thing is to look for a track to the skin, which is a thin black line between the mass and the anterior surface of the skin. It's not important which transducer plane you take your measurements from. You just want to ensure that you have a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. Tips for imaging a skin lesion include decreasing your depth, zooming the image, and using either a standoff pad or a glob of ultrasound gel because the mass will be located very superficially on the ultrasound image. Interested in more videos on ultrasound? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and tune in for our next video on Wednesdays.